Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim where I've been lured in once again by a strange plane. In this case it is the Dornier DO31. It is available at the marketplace for $15. It is Local Legends 15. And of course if you have the Deluxe or Premium Edition you can get it for $10. And we are going to see whether it is interesting enough. And I have tried to fly it and it is pretty darn strange. So we're going to see how that shakes up. There are five main liveries and then there's the Aviator Club liveries. And I tried this one last time, so I'm going to go with this experimental one this time. And then there's uh, green, green camouflage and marine search and rescue, which is nice. And I'm going to, at this time, at uh, the time I've already tried it, uh, I filled it up completely. But this time I'm going to make it a little bit easier for vertical takeoff and landing, so I'm not going to fill it up completely. Uh, but, oops. Alright, so they had city update, whatever number it is, and it is once again European cities, it's Germany. Uh, so we'll start over here, I don't know if that's one, one of the cities, but there sure are a lot of points of interest in Europe already, I'm just saying, maybe the rest of the world could get a few things. But, yes, let's focus on this plane. Uh, hybrid analog digital computer DO960 to enable stable and precise control in horizontal flight mode. Uh, it it's an interesting plane. Uh, it did have a test. It did have test flights, and that's at least one thing. But it, it of course was not a successful plane. It was the only VTOL transport ever built, and. For that reason, actually, Pekka had suggested it to me a while ago as a thing I could model for Kerbal Space Program. And I thought about modeling it for Kerbal Space Program because in that context, its vertical transport capabilities are actually pretty good and useful. For instance, it could cover and catch rocket stages like a helicopter would and go faster. So I still think that making it for Kerbal Space Program would be a good idea. It uses the same main engines as the Harrier, so it has two nacelles that have the Harrier engines in them. And then it has uh, supplementary engines on pods on the wingtips. And each wingtip pod has four engines, four small engines vertically mounted. So it says here, please note, uh, and it always pops up with this, by the way. Uh, to perform a vertical takeoff or landing, you will need to assign Throttle Axis 3 to your device control options. This is actually pretty annoying that it's on that particular axis, uh, because that interferes with more planes than if it was on uh, Axis 8, for instance, in which case it interfered with the Spruce Goose or something. So I've, I have a Dornier DO31 setup here, because it would interfere with too many planes. And basically what it's saying is you need uh, Throttle three axis to be some other axis than your main throttle. So I have my main throttle axis here for one and two, and then three is this one. And we could have it reversed or not reversed. Reversed in this case means that the nozzles, well, the whole vertical takeoff thing is horizontal. And then at the bottom, it is vertical, vertical. There's the maximum vertical thrust. Uh, so there's minimum vertical thrust, maximum vertical thrust, but here my throttle is low. I think that's good. It's like the nozzle's tilting down, so conceptually I think of it like this, but you might want to have it unreversed. It depends on you. Uh, I just have the landing gear parking, bra parking brakes and uh, flaps on this flight quadrant as well. So yeah. It's throttle three, and so it basically, unless you never fly something that has more than three engines, uh, it will interfere with other things. Now, where the heck were the lights? They were back here somewhere. Cockpit light switch. Uh, there we go. All right, a little bit brighter in here. It's a dark day, but we can still see the exterior, and. It's pretty good. I like the exterior. It's from any builds. And you can see the nice details. I don't know if we the, the cargo bay opens. Uh, that wouldn't be unheard of for any builds. So I've looked at the manual. I didn't see that in there. But I was looking for a lot of other things like how to fly the darn thing. So And it's not super easy. 
mind you. So yeah, that's the exterior for you. The interior, I was expecting more German. <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe, maybe you had all English instruments, but literally everything is in English. Uh, that might be a relief for some people, but a lot of the time I like it uh, a little bit more interesting and pe yeah, peculiar, basically. The units are... The, oh, I take it back. The altimeter is in German. I made a mistake. The altimeter is in German. Well, it has feet, though. But it has the altitude written in German. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the radar altitude doesn't, though. Oops. Okay, well, I don't know what our setting ought to be, but... Okay, so this is it. Maybe we should pick a nicer day, though. Just so we get a good look at things. Okay, so... In order to activate the VTOL mode, you have to click this Copilot Vertical Engine Control, which is sort of annoying, to be honest. Um, it's not all completely manual. Like, I can't go over here and tug this bar here. I can tug the throttle levers and this vertical lift command thing. But you can see it's sort of coupled for this vertical lift command. Right, so the nozzle lever and the throttle lever are coupled using this vertical lift command. Now there are other assists, in fact. This co-pilot boundary mode, which will basically try to keep you from killing yourself. Uh, there is the STVOVL assist, and then there's the hover assist. Uh, I'm going to leave those off to give a sense of what the characteristics are naturally, uh, but those are... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try not to use those. So... Uh, this is me throttling up with my main throttle. Actually, I'll just keep it throttled up. This is the th uh, the throttle three. So throttle three moves this vertical lift command really, and you note that that can override the main throttle, right? So this is my main throttle setting, and I don't know why we don't have parking brakes on. But, uh, alright, we might as well go-go. So I'm going to do the vertical lift command, and we go up. So, we can do that. We're light enough. And if we take a look outside, we see that the outer pods with their four engines apiece are open. And the carrier engine nacelles, the nozzles are pointing down. And this is gear retraction. Now, if you don't have that button, Copilot Vertical Engine Control, on, you won't be able to do any vertical things. So keep that in mind. So, we are uh, not quite hovering. We were hovering for a sec when we were tilted up, but we're not quite hovering now. Let me retract the flaps. The fra flaps are used for braking. Uh, so if they're full down, that's what you use to slow yourself down. And now I'm going to pull up the vertical lift control. And those nacelles automatically close. The nozzles are horizontal. And I'm going to go to full throttle. It can be in vertical mode for quite a while, and the transition is not as uh, drastic as with some other planes. So it's not like a completely different mode, it's pretty smooth. And right now we're at 300 knots. So it's a pretty fast plane. Of course we're not heavily loaded or anything. But, landing is interesting. And now here, we have the nozzles tilted down automatically for some reason. <laughs> I don't know, I'm going at 350 knots right now. Um, which is past the speedometer limit. 
or right at the top of it. But automatically something has uh, tilted those nozzles a little bit. Now they're horizontal. Okay, these on this side seem to be tilted down, but these on this side don't. Oh, that side must be compensating for something. I don't see any asymmetry in anything between the two engines. So, yeah, I don't know why... Why we have a different setting. So now if I try to change my uh, vertical lift axis, the throttle 3, it doesn't do anything until I hit this. And then I can do that. Slowing down with this is actually pretty difficult. I'm actually going to use the flaps to try and be air brakes. Initially, while trying this out, pitch didn't always do what I wanted it to do, but I've uh, I've gotten a feel for it, and now now me and the aircraft are more copacetic. Okay, ramp door open is back here, and the user manual, I guess, is available in here. Oh, oh that's just the user manual. Okay. Nose probe. Okay, so you might have seen on the purchase page the um, stick, the the stick that comes out of the nose. If you want to show that, I guess that's here. There we go. That's probably for instrumentation since it was an experimental aircraft. But really, I was hoping that this map would actually show me where I am. <laughs> Novel thought. I, th I think I'm, I'm that one. But it seems not centered on me. So, okay. Well, let's get try to get back to where we need to go. We're only going 70 knots right now. Mostly hovering, but not quite. We can easily stay in this mode and go faster by just retracting the flaps. Here I'm at 160 knots. Ah, uh, well, now it's automatically closed to. I didn't change the vertical lift uh, setting, but past 160, it automatically closed those outer ones. Just heading back to the airfield. I think I see it there. Okay, let's throttle down. It got to 346 knots pretty quickly. And of course, once those close, it automatically disengages this thing. So once again, we have to activate that and encourage it to do vertical lift things. And lower the flaps again. Oh, some lag here. And I'm going to landing gear. Flaps, I think, are all the way. My throttle is all the way down right now. And the vertical lifting is all the way down. And you can see we're going up. So the way to actually go down at all is to reduce the vertical lift one. So the throttle three axis. Now I'm going very severely here. Don't do this.
And then got to pull up to slow down here. And then I'm going to lower the nozzles again. Oh, lower the nozzles more. <laughs> uh, it's still new to me. Oh, there's another one there. Uh, okay. I always overrun the runway. Let me try and yaw myself around. Hold on. Yaw works. I don't know how. <laughs> uh oh. Okay. Eek. Okay, we we were down. I didn't intend to actually touch down like that, but if you want to stay down, you better get the throttle three axis up. Uh, not the best thing to do. Uh, so, yeah. Once you touch down, just push that throttle three axis so that it minimizes the vertical takeoff thing. Let me try and do that a little bit better. So we're throttling up the main throttle and at about 50 knots I, I lower the vertical takeoff thingy and we go off and then I throttle down and I lower the vertical takeoff thingy so that we go down but uh, uh, oh that guy came <laughs> oh I, I have too much vertical I have too much vertical so I'm mainly using the Axis 3 to manage my vertical descent here. And it's rough. Uh, I, uh, oh, see, now there I didn't uh, reduce the ooh, reduce the vertical takeoff thing very well. But yeah, it takes some practice, uh, especially if you're not using the assist. So anyway. You can use the assists, but I'm going to keep trying to practice without them. And so those are those. That's a little bit twitchy. There we go. Alright. So, there you have it. That is the Dornier DO-31. Very interesting, quirky plane. Uh, I certainly did not expect it to be available for Flight Sim. I've never seen it in another simulator. I didn't even know about it before Pekka told me about it because it's a very rare plane and it, it didn't actually go into production. So, yeah. Now let's try the ramp while we're here. So yes, we do have the ramp and the cargo bay. And that's what it looks like. So, with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.